The Hideout by Susanna Madiangeli and illustrated by Felicita Sala. Where are you? A voice called. Hurry up, we have to go. But Hannah wasn't there, and no one could find her. Hannah heard the voice calling, but it was too late to go back. She would live in the park, collecting lost things, drinking from the fountain, and hunting for birds. Maybe she'd wear a raccoon hat. There was just too much to do. She really had to stay. She made herself a cape out of feathers. She made herself a bed out of leaves, a bow and arrow. What else would she need? Some wood, a nice fire, nothing else. The shelter was perfect, and she wasn't alone. The odd furry creature was with her, too. She had found it behind the shrubs. The odd furry creature was always quiet and liked to hide in the darkness. Are you hiding from hunters? she asked. But the odd furry creature didn't respond. Are you hiding from enemies? she tried once more. The odd furry creature was silent again. Can I hide with you? Hannah pretended to hear a yes. She made it, a, she made it a cape out of feathers. She made it a bed out of leaves, right next to hers. Life in the park was wild. They ate grass and biscuits they found on the ground. They roasted pigeons on the campfire. They collected caterpillars, sticks, and dry leaves. Outside the shrubs, dogs peed on trees and went for walks, and balloons flew away. But no one ever wandered into Hannah and the odd furry creature's secret hideout. Anyone who tried would get stuck in the thick, wiry tangle of branches and leaves. Only Hannah knew the way through the bushes. It wasn't so hard, if this was your home, but the more time passed, the thicker the branches grew, and the smaller the gaps in the shrubs became. Uh oh, I wonder if she's going to get stuck in there. In the secret hideout, there was a, light, a little light. Only a few feeble noises made their way in from the outside. Whistling bicycle bells, the voices from far away, always far away. Hannah and the odd furry creature roasted lots of pigeons and collected lots of sticks. After that, it was perfectly quiet. So quiet. And only then a voice loud and clear came from you know where. Where are you, it said. It was hard to believe, but somewhere, someone was still looking for her. Hannah wondered if everything was still the same outside. She wondered if there was anything new to see after all this time. Hannah grabbed the odd furry creature's paw. Have you ever seen a balloon? she asked without answer. Have you ever seen a dog? Silence again. Would you come outside with me and have a look? Hannah pretended to hear a yes. She took off its cape made of feathers, folded it carefully, and put it on the bed made of leaves right next to hers. They put out the fire and left their secret hideout. They made themselves very small and crept through the tangle of branches and leaves, careful not to get hurt. The odd furry creature came out into the bright white light. Hannah took it for a little walk around the park. The old lady stared at it, and the children petted it. The creature would get used to it in time. Hurry up, said the voice from far away. We have to go. Hannah brushed away the crumbs from her eraser, blew on the piece of paper, and got up from her chair. Here I am. I'm coming, she said, glancing at her drawing one last time. Oh, she wasn't even anywhere. She was in a make-believe land in her drawing. Back in the park, the odd furry creature was still sitting on a bench, between dogs and balloons. The shrubs no longer seemed thick. From the outside, no one ho would have imagined that deep in the drawing, at the end of a long road made of brown and green pencil marks, a little girl had lived for a very long time.
There's the odd furry creature. The end.